Hey, what's up guys? Neat J here. Welcome to my video. Today, I'm going to show you how to light this scene using Redshift in Cinema 4D. Let's jump right in. First, let me break down the scene structure. We can see the viewport is very sluggish due to tons of grass and trees. There are too many polygons in the scene. Here are some tips to handle this kind of complex scene. We can turn off the material display in the viewport. Press Shift plus V to open the viewport settings. Uncheck materials under the view tab. We can use layers to separate different objects. Just select the objects and right click to add them to the layers. We can solo a single layer. and temporarily hide some parts to lighten the scene. In the project settings, we can lower the view clipping and level of detail for a more efficient viewport display. I'll hide all the layers of the main house and break down the grass and trees. I used Incidium to Grass to create the grass. In the grass layers, I have several types of plants. The first two layers are two grass procedural grass. We can tweak the parameters to create different varieties and drag in different materials for it. The other grass layers are all open source assets from Grass Vault. We can adjust the scale and rotation to make them suitable sizes in the scene. Now let's take a look at the trees. I used several Insidium 2 plant trees and exported them as proxies. I find that to plant objects make the viewport a bit sluggish. Some of these trees are from the Cinema 4D Asset Library. Just search tree in the Asset Browser. Let me load one into the scene to show how to export it as a proxy. In the File tab, click Export. Click the Settings icon for the RS proxy format. Set the proxy export parameters and hit OK. Now the proxy file is added to the scene. Change the preview mode to mesh. We can see some other plants have been added to the proxy file. It's weird, but this often happens when similar objects are in the scene among the selected object. So we shouldn't export directly in the project. Let's create a new project. Copy and paste the object to be exported as a proxy into the new scene. Don't change its position and then export this as a proxy. Now, we can see no other objects in the proxy file. Let's go back. The trees from the asset browser take up a lot of file space because they have tons of polygons. Proxy objects can save a lot of storage space. In the background, I use two RS matrix objects to scatter the trees as multi-instances, which also saves storage space. I also use proxies as particle objects. Now let's hide the trees and look at the main house. The plants are proxies too. The tulips in front of the third floor are from the Grasswald website as well. I used a cloner and added a random effector to the cloner to make the tulips stand naturally. On the rooftop, I used an IV generator. It's a plugin included in the Maxon One subscription. Just type IV generator to use it. Drag some leaves and place them under the IV generator, then drag in the surface object. Move 
move the generator close to the surface and you can see the effect now. We can tweak the IV parameters to change its appearance. Now, let's talk about the portal lights. I use redshift portal lights on all the windows and doors of the house to channel light from the external environment into the interior space, which can improve rendering efficiency and reduce noise. Just place them outside the window with the Z axis pointing inward to direct light into the room. Make sure they're very close to the window and do not overlap on the window frame or glass. Okay, that's all for the scene structure. Let's recreate the foggy lighting. Create an RS sky. I'll change the model to Hosek Wilkie. Create a physical sun and rotate the sun's direction. In the object tab of the sun, set the intensity to 5 and the sun disk scale to 10. Add an RS environment to the scene. Set scattering to 0 0.01 and anisotropy to 0 0.96 as a starting point. The fog is too thick because the sun is very bright and contributes heavily to the fog. In the Details tab of the Sun, under the Contribution tab, set the Volume Contribution to 0.4. Create an RS Volume Material for the Environment Object. In the Node Editor, connect a Noise Node to the Volume Port. Change the Noise Type to Turbulence and tweak the Fractals. In the color tab, change the color 1 from pure black to dark gray and color 2 from pure white to light gray to tweak the fog density. The fog position seems too skewed to the side. Tweak the anisotropy for a try. Now let's create a spotlight for the light rays. Place it to match the sunlight direction. Change the exposure to 10. Under the color tab, load a caustics texture as a gobo for the spotlight. Change the mode to color and temperature and change the temperature to 4000 Kelvin. In the contribution settings of the spotlight, turn off all channels except volume. Now we can see the light rays through the fog. Adjust the spotlight's position. Tweak the cone angle and fall off angle. Keep tweaking these parameters to get what you want. After all these adjustments, I'll optimize the render settings and render it out to check the result. That's the workflow. Just tweak and render. Okay, that's it for today's tutorial. If it helps, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.